Well, hello, neighbors. This is Brother Warren Trailer coming to you from my home tonight. Uh, many of you know who I am, praise God. But uh, uh, for those who don't, uh, I'm, a, I'm a minister at a whole services at a small church um, outside of Barstown, Kentucky, when it's open, praise God. I'm going to have to tag some people here, God, and see if... Uh, and get somebody to come in and uh, broadcast tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. I think that's about all of them. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise God. There's a few more here. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Okay, I think that's all. Praise God. If you're uh, listening tonight, I'm glad. Joe's watching. Thank you, Joe. The only one's watching right now. I uh, just came on and uh, uh, might just be you and me, Joe. <laughs> that's all right, though. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Okay, Peggy and Stacy. Well, God bless both of you. Glad you're there, Stacy, watching tonight. Bless your heart. Praise God. It's uh, good to have all three of you watching tonight. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, something tonight that uh, is one of the most sub important subjects of the Bible. The Bible says that now by the faith, hope, and charity, the word charity there in the 13th chapter of Corinthians is actually the word for love. And so now about a faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. So, Lord willing, I want to start talking. I want to talk to you tonight about God's love. I want to welcome all of you. And uh, uh, before we uh, go any further, I'd like to have a word of prayer. and like for you to agree with me in prayer, if you would, that God will just make this his broadcast the best I can. I've turned it over to him, and I want it to be his. And if you'll agree with me in that, then praise God, uh, uh, I would appreciate it. Alan, God bless you. Father, we come to you tonight together as your people, agreeing together in prayer, in asking, Lord, uh, will you have your way through this broadcast tonight? From the start to the end, let it be your time, Lord. Short or long, whatever you choose, you let everything be and according to your will. And we'll give you the glory and praise for it all, Father. We want you to have all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, just take control of everything that's said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you, Sam. Glad you're watching up now. Praise God. I'm glad to have you aboard. Praise God. As I said uh, when I first came on, I want to talk tonight about just a little bit about God's love. And uh, I don't plan for it to be a long broadcast, but uh, I do uh, want to uh, uh, talk about his love for just a little bit. And also let you know that uh, I won't be with you Sunday on the Facebook from my house, but I will be with you, Lord willing, from WGCR radio station. Uh, this is my Sunday. Brother Donnie always asked me to take the first Sunday of the month, and this coming Sunday is the first Sunday. And he uh, said, yeah, he'd like me to do the broadcast. So, Lord willing, I'll be at the station this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, bringing a message from the station. Now, we're not in the church, but we are in the FM building where we broadcast from, play music from. That's where I'll be and that's where the ministers have been that have been coming in every Sunday, praise God. <coughs> and so uh, you, uh, if, you can, if you can tune in and listen, I'd greatly appreciate it. Starts at 11 o'clock Eastern time, and it goes off at 12. Have to be off at 12 because they have broadcasts. They have other broadcasts that come on, so you won't have to be on but an hour, praise God. Maybe not that long. But that's this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock. And if the Lord wills, uh, also, let me tell you too that if you if if you're in radio range, 
that's good. You should be able to get the station, okay? Thank you for the heart, praise God. But if you're uh, in, a, in an area maybe that it's hard to get the station, it's not clear or something, there's two ways you can get us other than tuning in to 90.1 FM. You can go to wjcr.org, and you can, that's our website, and when you bring the website up, there'll be a little button there that says, Listen Live. Just click on that button, and you'll start receiving our streaming, and uh, you you will hear uh, you will you'll hear the station just like they're hearing on the radio. Praise God! But then, if you can't do that, if you want to get a good clear signal, uh, which the streaming should be good. Clear, but uh, if for some reason it wouldn't be, you, there's an app you can go to. You can if you don't have it on your phone, it'd be good if you could get put the app on your phone. It's called Simple Radio, S-I-M-P-L-E. Praise God. God bless you, Stacy. Uh, it's Simple Radio is the app, name of the app. Just get that, that app, and you can get WJCR on there. It's in good and clear. So you got three ways. You can either get us by 90.1, or you can get us by streaming, or you can get us on Simple Radio app. Praise God. Okay? I will let you know that. That's just sunny, summing, this coming. God bless you, Sandy. That's this coming Sunday morning at 11. And if the Lord wills, I'll be starting a study in the book of Revelation this coming Sunday evening at 6 o'clock Central Time. God bless you, Eva. 6 o'clock Central Time, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. This coming Sunday evening, if the Lord wills, I'll be starting a study in the book of Revelation. Uh, and uh, people, uh, several people, four or five or more people have asked me uh, to uh, uh, do a study on the book of Revelation. They knew we did it, a study, two studies on it in the church for our whole services. And uh, so... Uh, we we learned a lot from that. All of us, I did, because I have a study for it. I learned things I didn't even know before. But uh, praise God. Judy, God bless you. Glad you're watching. Praise the Lord. Um, anyway, uh, we'll be starting that study on the book of Revelation, Lord willing, uh, this coming Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern time, right here from where I'm coming to you tonight from my home. Praise God. So if you're interested in learning about Revelation, just, uh, uh, just tune in this coming Sunday evening. I encourage you to tune in and not miss a broadcast because each broadcast in the book of Revelation is going to tell you something that you didn't might have not known or something that uh, didn't get to cover the week before, praise God. So it's just a lot of stuff in the book of Revelation. And I don't know how long it's going to take us to go through it. When I went through it at, uh, w, at uh, not WJCR, but when I went through it at the church, I, it took a year. Yeah, we actually were in the book of Revelation for a year. Uh, every service, except when I felt like God wanted me to deviate from it because I asked the people when I started, I said, can you got to, or told them, I said, you have to give me a leeway here to, that if somebody came into the church or some more than one came in that I felt God was letting me know they needed to be saved or they, they needed to hear the gospel message about salvation that I needed to be able to do that. And so they all agreed to that. Praise God. There was no problem with that. So if you have your Bibles and, uh, Get ready to turn to some scriptures uh, that uh, I have for tonight. I don't plan to take a long time, but I never do. And sometimes it goes longer than uh, I plan for it to, praise God. But I want to talk tonight about God's love and God's love for us as his people. The Bible tells us there are four types of love mentioned in the in the Word of God. God bless you, George. Glad you're watching. There are four types of love mentioned in the Bible, in God's Word. The first one is the Eros love. 
E-R-O-S, Greek word E-R-O-S, which means a passionate love, a romantic love. Ashley, God bless you. Glad you're listening, watching. The Eros love, which is the first love I'll just mention, is a passionate love, a romantic love, an intimate love between a husband and a wife. That's the Eros love, okay? Praise God. And then there's another love that uh, is spelled, the, the Greek word is S-T-O-R-G-E, storge. I don't know how to say it other than that. It might be storge, or I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but it, uh, it means a familia type love or the love between family members. Now, I've always known that there had to be a different type love for family members and friends. Now, some people actually have friends they love as much as family members. But for the most part, most of the time, there's, there's the love we have for our family members and it's a different kind of love. <coughs> it's a different kind of love than our love for friends. This familial type love is a love between family members. And you love your husband, your wife, your children, your mother and father, your brothers and sisters with a different type love than you do your friends. Praise God. And that I think that's very clear. To most of us, uh, I believe we'd all say yes to that. Praise God. And then there's the filial type love, which is a love between friends. And sometimes that love between two people that are friends can be as strong almost as the love for family members because <coughs> you, you forgive me, folks, I still got that cough that. Uh, I've had for about four or five weeks, and it's, uh, I think, related to the allergies I've got. I've had, praise God. I haven't been get rid of, be able to get rid of them for about four or five weeks, but God's going to take care of it and see me through it like he always has. Praise God. Praise the Lord. But there's uh, a, a love that sometimes people have for a friend that is almost as strong as their love for, uh, for a family member. And some people have actually said we love them like a son or daughter, a brother or sister. Um, and so uh, that's, that's, that's the way it is for some people, and that's called the filial type love. It's the word that we get the, the name Philadelphia from. That's, uh, uh, that's why they call Philadelphia the uh, city of brotherly love. Praise God. And then there's the agape love. The fourth type of love. That's God's love. It's a it's the highest form of love possible. It's the love God has for man. And it's the love a true Christian has for God. Praise God. It's the kind of love. Jonah, God bless you. Glad to have you here. Wish you could have been at the start, but glad to have you. Praise God. The fourth type of love is God's love, a divine love, the highest form of love possible, the love God has for man and the love a true Christian has for God, the love that originates with God and that he showed to, showed to man through his son Jesus. The agape love is the love is a love, God bless you, Jonah, is a love that originates with God until God enables you and me or a person to love him, uh, to love him like he does us, that love doesn't exist in us. It's not possible for a non-Christian to love God with the agape love because to know God that way, to love him that way, you have to know God because he is agape love. And you, the only way you can get it, agape love is, is, from, is from God himself. Praise God. So 
It's the kind of love that God that originated with God that he showed to, to us through his son, Jesus. I'm going to tell you the two greatest acts of love that I personally believe God has shown ever shown to man. The two greatest acts of love that God's ever shown to man. First one is the birth of his son, Christmas time. The birth of his son. The two greatest acts of God's love shown to man, the first one was the day Jesus was born. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. That wasn't just talking about the crucifixion. That was talking about him giving the world his son. His son left. His son left his throne in heaven and came to earth in the form of a baby at the beginning. And when you could, if you could have seen that little baby that Mary was holding in her arms, you would have been looking at the at at God's love demonstrated to people to the world. He gave his son. His son came on that first Christmas night and was born of a virgin. And that right there was the greatest act of love up until that time that God had ever shown to man. The birth of Christ was the greatest act of love that God had ever shown to man, to think that he had actually sent his son who reigned beside of him on the, on the throne beside of him, the Godhead, a part of the Godhead, to come to earth, to be born. He was giving up his son from being beside of him to come to earth for man. What an act of love. What an act of love. And that was God's. That's the greatest act of love God, I believe, it's shown personally. I believe it's shown to the world and to people, to mankind, up until that time. Praise God. Then the second greatest act of love that he's shown, showed to man, was the day that Jesus died on the cross for us. Was the day that God put his son on the cross for us. Praise God. Praise God. And that was the second greatest act of love he's shown. That's shown. That even encompassed, encompassed maybe more love than even the birth. Without the birth, there could, there could be no death. So God giving his son was the greatest act of love he'd ever shown. Rhonda, God bless you. And, and uh, I want you to know God loves you. The greatest act of love before the crucifixion that God showed the world was his son, sending his son in the form of a baby. His son left heaven and came to earth, would be here for 33 and a half years. And then the second greatest act of his love, which is probably was, uh, I don't know if you can put, uh, put them in, I don't know if you can rate them because without the first, it wouldn't be the second. But the second greatest act of love he had she showed the earth, uh, the world, uh, God did, was putting his son on the cross for us. Now, I, I want you to learn something. You may not agree with what I'm about to tell you because you may have been taught different. But man, I'm sorry, Sam. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, buddy. I wish I knew what to do. He said he's having a problem with the live feed. Any rest of you are not. I know if, if, if any of the rest of you hear me clear, I'm, if you if you are, just let me know. But I'm sorry, Sam, about that. Maybe it's where you're at. Maybe it's the location. Uh, I, I don't know how many bars I've got here, but usually I, I'm right here, just about 15 feet from my wife. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know about all that, Sam. So, okay, Ashley says she's having a hard time. Well. Hey, see, I don't know what to do with it. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, she said, I can hear you, but, and y'all reading this too. I'm sure I think all of you see what she's saying. I can hear you, but uh, I don't know. Your mouth and the sound match. Yeah, 
I noticed that when I went to look at the other one I did Sunday. Um, what I'm saying does not, the words and my moving of, movement of my lips does not match. Praise God. And I don't know what to do about that. I wish I did. I can say something to my son, Joshua, and maybe he can tell me what's going on. But uh, I, I know I love you too, Sam. Praise God. She says, uh, Judy, look, she said, I did too. I went out of it and came back in, and it's fine now. Well, maybe the others can do that. Maybe the others can go off and come back on, if that's what you're talking about, going out of the site and coming back on again. I don't know. I hope, I hope you can, because if, if it's going to be like that, I'll have to stop having these broadcasts because it's, it's too, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, okay. Something happened to Mark? Is that what you're saying, Judy? Okay, I, I don't know, Joe. Uh, it's working now, Samuel said, Sam said. So I don't know. I don't know if it's a atmospheric conditions. I don't know if it's... Uh, I, I've done everything I know on my phone. Uh, praise God. Maybe you need to go out and come back in, and maybe that'll help. Uh, Judy said it did, but I don't know what you mean by Mark had trouble earlier, but, but up north in Indiana, in Indiana I don't... I don't know if you're talking about he was listening to me or he had some problems of some kind. I don't know what that means, Judy, uh, but I hope he's okay. Praise God. I was listening to him the other night again. On, he had a good message, short message on the, uh, Facebook, I mean on the uh, Internet. Praise God. Anyway, I was talking about God's love. Praise God. Oh, okay. She said her and her daughter were having an experience and, and they just lived down the road from each other. Well, I don't know what that is. I, I don't know. Is that the server? My internet is horrible. Praise God. Jerry Parkinson, God bless you and Mary. You're listening. I hope you don't have the same problem as them are. I'll try to get through this as quick as I can tonight. I don't know. I may not be able to do any more broadcasts. If it's going to be that way, I won't do any more because it's uh, not, it's, uh, uh, it's not, uh, oh, okay, okay. I see, you was listening to Mark, and he was cutting out on his live video. Well, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's the atmospheric conditions or if it's, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what causes that, praise God. But anyway, I, I'll just try to go through it as quick as I can and get done tonight, praise God. Praise the Lord. It's very hard to watch that. I see that on TV sometimes. Voices not, I'll watch CBN or something. And voice is not matching up to the uh, to the their mouth and, and the sound different from the way they're what they're speaking by their mouth and it uh, it's it's hard to watch. Sometimes it's just close my eyes and listen to it <laughs> and try to get something out of it that way. Praise God. The agape love of God is the highest form of love that is in existence. It's the kind of love God has for man and man that Christians are supposed to have for God. Many say, thank you, many say that the agape love of God is, the, is an unconditional love for his children. So it, it is the highest form of love possible because it comes from God. It's a pure love. It's a wonderful love God has for us. The Bible says God loves us as his children. Praise God. Beyond our knowledge to understand. And Jerry said, pray for Melinda Norris. Lord, we pray for Melinda right now. We don't know, dear God, what's wrong with her. We don't know the need and we don't have to. You know all about it. And so I agree with those who will agree with me tonight. And asking, Father, will you touch Melinda? We agree in asking, all of us, will you lay your hand upon Linda? Will you let your healing virtue, your healing power flow through her body, your delivering power, power to meet needs, save? Lord, whatever's the need there, would you meet the need, Father? 
Would you meet the need tonight, right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, Jerry. Praise the Lord. The Bible says God's love for us as his children is beyond our knowledge to understand. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 17 through 19, I want to read this to you. Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 17 through 19, praise God. That Christ may dwell in your heart, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, I could have just took those three verses right there and spent a whole on it, upon that part. There's so, many, so much in that three verses. Praise God. That we may be able to comprehend, verse 18, with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height of his love. Now, that is like this. If you've got... He talked about being rooted in the in the in the, the verse before and, and grounded in, the, in God's love. If you've got something that's above ground, above ground, it's wide, it's it's uh, and it's long. That's what he's talking about. That we can begin to have some comprehension of God's type of love, uh, love for us. There, we'll be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, that's the width, the length, the, the the length is how far back it goes, as far as I know. The depth is how deep it goes, and the height is how high it is. Praise God. That's what he's talking about there. And then in the next verse, but he's saying that word comprehend there means to be able to take, to apprehend, to receive. That we may be able to receive, begin to understand, receive it into how great this love is for us. But to know it in its fullness, it's impossible. We know that God loves us with a love beyond anything we can comprehend. And it's, we know he has a great love for us, but to measure it, there's no way to do it. And I can tell you why in a few moments. <coughs> Praise God. In verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. See that? Pass his knowledge beyond our knowledge to know in his fullness. We can begin to count, comprehend it, or I mean, apprehend it, or uh, begin to realize what it's like. Uh, if by, by we're Christians and we 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 walk with the Lord, we serve Him, we we uh, read the Word, we pray. And we know how much God loves us from the fact that he saved us. I mean, we know that he loves us because he saved us. But we can begin to get an idea about his great love. But comprehend it or, or completely understand it in its fullness. Praise God. Praise God. Verse 19 said, passes knowledge. And that word passes there is a Greek word which means to throw beyond the usual mark, to surpass, to exceed, to excel, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, knowledge which excels or goes beyond what we can uh, uh, imagine, what it, uh, imagine what it is, uh, imagining what it is surpasses what we uh, can imagine, exceeds what we can know. It excels far beyond what we can know in its fullness. It's so great. And the word knowledge here just simply means knowing, our ability to know. Praise God. The, God's love surpasses our ability to comprehend, to know his love totally. It goes beyond our ability to know how great it is. And there's a reason for that. Here, I'm going to give you the reason 
why it's not possible for us to to know in its fullness totally and know exactly how much he loves us. It's not possible to know how great his love is because of one reason. It's not possible because the Bible tells us that God is love, that God is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. He may have the answer to your problem, but when it comes to love, he is love. He is love. God is love. You need to try to understand and comprehend that if you can. He is love. Thank God he is. Praise God. God's love is comprehensible to its, in its fullness because God is love. In 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Now, reason, let me tell you why, why you can't because God's love. Because with God being God, he's past our ability to, beyond our ability to every compre ever be able to comprehend God in his fullness. You, we can't, in heaven we won't know because God is beyond any being, God is beyond any being that we could ever know. Everything else is finite. God is infinite. We don't understand that. We can't comprehend that. He is infinite in being. He is beyond our ability to understand. If you, I, I, I preached a message uh, last year at WJCR on the awesomeness of God. And I brought out scriptures that told us things about God that's just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. But the scripture says they're, they're, it's the way it is. It's true about it. Folks, I believe the word of God. I long since stop trying to figure out what something means in some ways about God and about the, and the world. It's just beyond my ability to do it. It's beyond anybody's ability to do it. There's just no way we can comprehend God and, and understand and know God in his fullness as far as, as far as knowing his greatness, how great he is. Praise God. Did you know the Bible said, I brought this up last week or week before, or service, last service, or service for. Did you know that is the right hand of God stretches across the universe? Did you, you, ever, you, you ever read that? It's in the Word of God. Look it up. I probably got thought about it. I looked it up and had it for you. His right hand or, and it would be both hands, of course, but it talks about his right hand from, from the back, tip of his hand back to the, uh, to the tip of his middle finger. He, he is across the entire universe. There's one thing about God. There's several things in the Word of God that's beyond our ability to understand. We can't comprehend him. They say, well, how can he deal with me if he's so great? Because the Bible says that God Lord himself, made himself small enough, humbled himself, made himself small enough to come down to deal with man, to be able to make the earth and to put man on it. Now, I'm going to share something with you. It's going to deviate a little bit from the word, but it actually it does have to do with love. Why? Did God make man? I've had people ask me that. If God knew that all this mess was going to be happening down here and man was going to mess up like he did, why did he make him? Well, it's a very simple answer to me. It's not hard for me. God made man with a free will to choose how he wants to do. How he, because he wanted someone to be in heaven with him one day that was there because they chose to be, not because they were made there. God was lonely. He wanted somebody to love him that loved him because they chose to love him. You don't want your husband or wife to love you because they're made to, do you? 
You want them to love you because they choose to love you. You don't want your children to love you because they feel like they have to. You want them to love you because they choose to love you. Same with everybody that you know that you love. You don't want them to have to love you because or love you because you did something or have to do something to make them love you. You want them to love you because they choose to love you. He wanted somebody to be in heaven with him one day choose to love him. He knew man would fail, but there would be multitudes of millions and even into the billions of people probably that would be in heaven one day because he knew one day his son would die on a cross. People would accept him, be born again, be saved, willingly following the Lord, loving him because they choose making a decision to serve him and live for him, even though it may cost them their life. And they would be in heaven one day because they chose to be there, because they chose to love the Lord God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Praise God. Because they chose to be there. There's pe The people that's in heaven tonight are there because they chose to put God first. They chose to love God more than anything. They chose to ha let him have his will in their lives. He was lonely and he wanted somebody there was there because they chose to be. And don't you want somebody to be with you because they chose to be with you? And they look at you and say, I love you with all my heart. And I want, I'm here because with you, because I want to be. Because I have to. If he made people have to come to heaven or come to heaven because they they get to him because they have to. That's not, that's not love. That's being forced. He wanted somebody to be there, people to be there that would love him because they chose to love him. Praise God. God's love surpasses our ability to know his total love. It's beyond our ability to know how great it is. The reason is it's because God is love and he, he is love. Every fiber of God's being is love. And it's not comprehend. It's not possible for us to comprehend how great God is. We can't. It's not possible. He's God. He's omnipresent. He's present everywhere, at all times. He's omnipotent, which means he's all powerful. He knows no limits to his power. He's unlimited in power. He's all knowing. He knows everything. He's, he knows everything that's ever existed, no matter how far back it goes, and, and then everything will ever exist. He knows where you and I are going to be this very moment, if we're still alive and here on earth next time this year, next time this year. He knows. He knows where we'll be, what we'll be doing. He knows what will be in our lives and what won't be in our lives. He knows everything. There's nothing he doesn't know. You can't hide anything from him. He sees everything. The Bible says he records everything. He records our voices. He records our actions. He records our thoughts. Mm. You can't hide anything from him. And that God loves you. He loves you. He doesn't love your sin. And he doesn't love my sin. Matter of fact, he hates sin. He hates it. He hates it. He detests it. The Bible tells us there are sins that are an abomination to God. But he loves us. Praise God. And because we can never fully understand or comprehend God's God, and and uh, we can never we can never expect to ever understand or comprehend his great love for us. We just know that it is far beyond what we think it is and far greater than we know. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Lord God, for loving us like that. Thank you, Lord God, for loving us like that. But we can, through the scriptures, through the scriptures, we can begin to have a little bit of what uh, the heart, I said that we've been uh, in Ephesians uh, 318, be able to comprehend the breadth, length, depth, and height. We can have begin to have some idea of how he loves us, how much he loves us. John 316 tells us of his great love. 
John 3.16 tells us of his great love. <coughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We know by God sacrificing his Son, he was showing us how great his love is for us. To give up his son. Part of the Godhead. That had never been separated from the father. Ever. He gave him up for us. The Bible says in Isaiah. Three, chapter 53 I don't know exactly what verse it is maybe 11 12 verse or something like that he says it pleased the father to bruise his son for us to crush his son you don't know how much he loves you folks I don't know I know he does because he paid a great price far beyond anything we'll ever know in all of eternity we'll never know what Jesus went through on the cross because it was not only the death of a human being it was the death of God the son and we can never understand that because we're not in that position praise god romans 5 8 says but god commended his love toward us the agape love toward us in that while we were yet god showed how great his love is for us in the while we were while we were vile wretched abominable sinners he still died for so sent his son to die for us on the cross I don't understand that kind of love. Do you? I don't. I don't understand it. Because I look at people today and I say, whew, man. Of course, I was as wicked as I had a black heart. Folks, it was not a, I didn't have a good heart. But praise God. He still said, I love you. I don't love what you're doing. I hate what you're doing. But I love you. God showed how great his love is for us. In that while we were yet vile sinners, wretched, abominable sinners, his son still died for us. He was saying through his son, I love you no matter. Son. Oh, my goodness gracious. <clears throat> my goodness gracious. Hmm. He said, I love you no matter what you've done. I hate your sin. He hated our sins, but his love for us was so much. He loved us so much that he made a way for us to be able to have forgiveness of our sins. Praise God. God bless you, Joshua. Glad to have you there. Praise God. He hates our sin, but he loves us so much, he made a way for us to be forgiven of our sins, <clears throat> and that was through the death of his son. The word agape refers to God's love for us, and the literal meaning of that is love feast, a feast of love. Now, just think about it. Meditate on it. Think about it. He loves us so much, it's like God has a love feast for us, each every, each and every one of us. Praise God. He just has done all he can to let you know this is the great love I have for you. Agape love, listen to this, we need to hear this. Agape love is always shown by what it does, not necessarily by what it says. God's word said, don't love me in tongue and word in tongue. Love me in deed and in truth. He wants more than our lip service saying we love him, but our lips saying we love him. He wants our actions to show it. Agape love is always shown by what it does. God's love is displayed most clearly at the cross. God's love for us was shown that was the second greatest act of love he ever shown, and it was probably greater than the first, but you got to have the first to have the second. It's 2, 4, and 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, 
The word rich means abounding with mercy. For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, hath quickened us. The word quickened means made alive. Us together with Christ. For by grace are you saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Why talk about love, God's love? It needs to be talked about. We need to have a love for God. The Bible tells us he wants us to have the same love for him as he has for us. Agape love. We are children of God because of his love for us and because he bestowed his love on us through his son. 1 John 3, 1 says this, chapter 3, verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah! That includes the daughters. A lot of times God uses one word like sons or uh, sometimes he says sons and daughters, but uh, that includes the daughters. It's, it's, it's the soul. It's the person. It's not necessarily the, and there's no sex in heaven. I mean, as far as no sexual, uh, um, uh, there's no, nobody is male or female in heaven as far as God's children. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Just think of that, folks. God, the creator of heaven and earth, God who has existed and never had a beginning will never have an end, the Bible says. The Bible says God is from everlasting to everlasting. What is everlasting? It means no end. Go all the way back in the past, there's no end. As far as you go, God's there. To the future, there's no end. It's ever, God's from everlasting to everlasting. Praise God. God's love is a commitment type of love. We need to hear this, folks. God's love is a commitment type of love. It's a sacrificial love. Now, are you listening? You're not going to. You done had some come on with several, and I done gone down to a smaller number. Right, people just don't care about hearing about the love of God. One day they wish they had a praise God. God's love is a commitment type of love. It's a sacrificial love. It, it's demonstrated in the si sacrifice of his son. He sacrificed his son because of a four-letter word. Love. For you. For me. No, no greater love hath this. And a man laid down his life for his friends, Jesus said in John 15, 13. I could ask you a question tonight, and, and I'll give you the answer, but you would say to yourself, Brother Warren, I, I'm not sure that's true, but it's okay. I don't, I'm not going to, I won't argue, debate things. Somebody ever comes across something with something that wants to debate the word or something, they just had to find another place to go because I'm not going to do it. The Bible says not to debate the word of God, and I'm not going to debate it. I already know what I believe, and I know what God's word says, and what God's word says is what's important to me, not what somebody else thinks. Praise God. I base my whole life, Christian life, on, on the Word of God. Praise God. And what it says. Praise God. It's a God's love is a sacrificial love. And immediately we think about Jesus sacrificing himself. But I'm going to share something with you in a moment that goes beyond that. Do you I better not get in there. I was going to ask you, I'll tell you a question that some, some people don't misunderstand, but God's love is a sacrificial love that he has for us to the point that he sacrificed part of the Godhead for us. I don't know if we understand or not. I, I, don't, I know we don't because this was God who has no end and no beginning. He chose to be in a creature, become a creature he chose to become a, a being that would have an end for us so that we could be a be, become a being that has no end. Do you understand that? Do you understand? Jesus came as a, as a being that had no end. 
He'd never had a beginning, never have an end. He had no end. But he chose to become something that would make him have an end, which is bad for him because it was going to be a terrible price that he's going to have to pay. It was going to be the separation from God, his father, which is just unbelievable, hard to believe, hard to understand. Praise God. Thank you, Joshua. He became a being that was going to, that went from being a being that had no end to being a being that did have an end so that we who are beings who have an end could become a being that doesn't have any end. Do you understand that? If you don't, think about it. Praise God. He desires and that sacrificial love that he has for us John 15, chapter 15, verse 14. Jesus said, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. He desires that we sacrifice ourselves for him. I'm going to read a scripture to you in a moment. How do you sacrifice yourself unto the Lord? Does anybody tell me? Some of you probably know. I can't hear you, but uh, I don't, you don't have to take time to write it. But does anybody know how you sacrifice? You sacrifice yourself by giving up yourself to do the will of God, to accept his son and to follow him and do his will. Get Do his will, not your will. That's it. Because... He sacrificed ourselves, gave himself up for us. We have no end because we have eternal life through him. We're going to live forever. And Jesus said it. He that lives and believes in me shall never die. I'm not going to die. I'm going home one of these days, but I'm not going to die. And this earth is not my home, folks. The longer I'm here, the more I don't like this world. Exactly. Sacrifice yourself to him, the Bible says. Die to yourself. Die. Paul said, I die daily. It's a daily thing we do. Get up and, Lord, this is your day, not mine. But how many of us do that? Praise God. And I, I'm not in a hurry to go. I want to go when God wants me to go. I don't want to go ahead of time or behind time. I want to go when God wants me to go. I have a family I love and I enjoy so much being with. Praise God. That's it. That's it. Beth, God bless you. Praise God. I guess I'm going to have to start over now. Beth, come in. Praise God. He said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And in, in, these, uh, in, the, in those two verses, I think it's 1 John 3, 1, and then 15 John 15, 14, we learn two things. Jesus is saying, there is no greater love than I have for you because I'm going to lay down for you. That's John 15, 13 and John 15, 14. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. She said the rapture. I am looking forward to the rapture. Praise God. And we are getting closer and closer every day. Praise God. The Bible said he'll appear to those who are looking for his coming. Some people don't look or not look. look. I think it's going to be way out in the future. Well, I want to tell you. I want to tell you. He said it'll appear to those who are looking for his coming. There'll come a time when people will not be looking for him, and they'll catch him, all, catch him unaware. And, and, and I want to be looking. Every day I know Jesus could come. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> My son is determined that I'm going to be here till the rapture. And uh, uh, in this case, I'd love to be joined arm in arm, headed right on into glory. Praise God. Jesus says, there's no greater love than I have for you because I, I'm going to lay down my life for you. That's the greatest love I can show you. And then he says, Tammy, God bless you. Glad to have you there. That's my precious daughter down in Florida. Then he said, I expect the same thing from you. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to lay my life down for you, and I expect you to do the same for me. 
Woo, praise God. He wants us to commit to obeying all he tells us to do. That's right. I can give you some scriptures in John the 15th chapter. It tells us if we love him, we will keep his commandment. Hi, Tammy. Love you. Hope everything's okay. He wants us to sacrifice our life for him. He wants us to commit to obeying all he tells us to do. That's all found in John the 14th chapter. And uh, he said, and that's a sacrificial life, giving up our lives in order to gain the life he has for us. Romans 12, 1, listen to it. Listen. Well, I hope so. I'm, I'm looking for him every day, Joe, so I'm not going to be one of those caught unaware looking. He said if a pair of those looking for his coming, don't be, don't, don't get into a place and say it was 5, 10, 20 years because you, you'll you get caught, un, caught unaware. Just start looking for him. He's coming. I don't know when he's coming, but he's coming. That's a fact. There's one thing. Praise God. Colin, God bless you. God bless you, Colin. There's one thing that is a fact. That the whole All of God's words is a fact, but one thing about the Lord's a fact. He said, I will come again, and he is going to come again. And there's nothing, nor no one. I love you too, Colin. I hope you're doing good, buddy. I, I love you. He, made, he sacrificed for us, and he said, I expect the same thing from you. Listen to Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Your bodies, not your soul, not your spirit. He's talking about in the flesh. Praise God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I'm glad you are, Joshua. By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A minister once said, I heard him say, and it was, I thought I'd never heard that before, but and I, but it was true. He said, the problem with a living sacrifice, it, it keeps getting up off the altar and crawling away and going on and doing its own thing. It don't stay on the altar. It's alive. That's why we got to be dead to ourselves. The only thing that matters in life should be us fulfilling the will of God in our lives. That should be the most important thing in our lives. When people call prayer line and say, my request is you'll pray for God to help me to do his will no matter what. That's the greatest request that God could ever hear. Now you say, well, what about your family? Well, folks, listen, don't, thing that we don't use, a lot of us don't use spiritual common sense. If God gives you a gave you a family, a husband and a wife and children and a mother and father, he expects you to do, or in relation to them, what his word tells you to do. The word talks about the family and what we're supposed to do as family members, and he, that's his will. That His word is his will. Praise God. But he expects us to do, and that's what I was going to say, what is, how do we know what to, it's his, the word. It's, the word is his will. The word is his will for our lives. And if we truly, many people say they love God, and many people say they would they would give up their life, but they're not even willing to do a few things that God tells them to do. It's very clear. They won't do them. What, God, Jesus, don't tell me you love me by your words. Tell me, show me you do. In John, the 14th chapter, by, I should turn over and read those three scriptures, but it tells us in that chapter two, if we love him, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my words. Whoa, 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 Jesus. Is that how you tell that I love you? Yes, I don't tell by your words. I tell you, I tell by your actions. Now, words are important when they're in the will of God. When you get to get down before the Lord or go pray to the Lord, you worship him. So that's all God, that's his word. You're doing what the word says. And that's coming out of your mouth. And that's what God wants us to do. And so, and, and God wants us to speak his words as we feel that the Holy Spirit to speak them, wherever it might be, for whatever reason. That's part of God's will. But it all originates in the word. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, 
acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The word sacrifice there means a living, literal sacrifice, a sacrifice to him while we are alive. My life should be a sacrifice to the Lord. Holy means sacred, pure, blameless. We all seem to think that we can have a little bit of sin in our lives. We, I'm talking about willful sins, things we know we shouldn't be doing. But God says, no, I expect you to be holy, pure, sacred, blameless in my eyes. How can you be blameless in the eyes of God? We all fail, Brother Warren. If you're following the Lord and living for God and you're serving him, the Bible says when you walk in oneness with the Father and the Son, the blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses you of all sin. First John chapter 1. Now, it's not, he, did, he said if you're following him, you're serving him, you're walking in oneness with him. Not if you're straying off on one side or the other, going out and doing what you want to and coming back. That's not fulfilling that chapter. That's not fulfilling that word. It's a commitment to lay down your life for him. Give up your life to gain the life he has for you. And folks, let me tell you, that life he has for you is the greatest life you could possibly ever have. It's the greatest life you could have. Praise God. Nothing. Listen, you may not believe this because you got a lot of flesh in control and you want, you love you and maybe like the fleshly sins and they really make you feel good in the flesh. But let me tell you something. Praise God. Hallelujah. The life God wills for us to live is giving up our life for him to serve him and live a holy, pure life. Acceptable means well-pleasing unto God, it says, which is your reasonable service. It says rational. What he expects is just, folks, listen, Jesus did all that he did because he loves you. And he expects us to do all that we to do and, and following him and, and to uh, uh, end up doing what he did because we love him. Praise God. When I was at the church before we, I forget to do this sometimes. I don't do it all the time, folks, because I forget it. But I do it often when God brings it to my mind. We leave church after service, say, on Sunday. I'm going to go out. I'm going to stop somewhere to get something to eat because I usually don't eat before I get there in the mornings. And so I ask the Lord when I leave. I do this. I've done it quite a few times. Thank you, Joshua. I've done it quite a few times, but I, I don't do it all the time because I uh, forget to. But some, when I think of it, when I'm pulling out of the lot, I say, now, Lord, where do you want me to eat today? I said, Lord, where do you want me to eat? I give it to you. I put it in your hands. Wherever you want me to eat, that's where I want you to eating and, I, and I, I believe if i'm in the i believe if i'm in the will of god when i'm eating i'm gonna be all right i'm where god wants me i still believe in praying over the food thanking god for it quoting a scripture over it but i still believe I, I need to be where god wants me to be praise god so and there's been times he's divinely led me to places i will show me this is where i'm to go and i would see it the sign and i said okay lord that's it. That's where I'll go. Praise God. The Bible tells us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Now, here's some. Here's a scripture that I want to read to you. I know time's running out, and some of you's got to go, maybe or something. Uh, I've lost quite a few people, but I got eleven left. That's good. Praise God. <laughs> Josh says Subway. Yeah, I'll be, I be. Like, I like Subway. Uh, I like I like Subway, praise God. Hey, they got a special on, folks. I shouldn't even get off on this right now. I hope it's still going. Buy two foot longs, get one free. Praise God. Just tell, I'll throw that into you. Praise God. Mark, the 11th chapter, verse 30. If people change to turn to it. 
Mark the 11th chapter, verse 30. Here's what Jesus said. Boy, please listen, folks, to this. And thou shalt love, it's the word love, there's agape love. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And the second is like unto it, namely this, thou shalt love the Lord, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And that word love there for your neighbor is not the uh, filial type love, it's the agape love. We're to love our neighbors as God loves them. I can't do that, Brother Warren. Well, God wouldn't have told you to do it and told me to do it if we couldn't do it. We can do it. Do we want to? I don't know what kind of, and neighbors, folks, listen. The scripture tells us this neighbors is not necessarily the ones next, just not just the ones living next to you. It's people you meet. The scripture tells us this. If you're out somewhere and you meet somebody and there's a need or whatever, I don't know what the reason you're, you, what you would, <coughs> excuse me, uh, be around them for, but that's your neighbor. And we're to love them as we love ourselves. Praise God. John, I'm going to go ahead and read these scriptures to you, and I hope I'm not missing the Lord here. Lord, tell me when to stop. John 14, chapter 14, verse 15, 21, and 23. Listen to these scriptures. John chapter 14, verse 15, 21, and 23. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then in verse 21, he says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. Do you see what great blessing people are missing but not obeying God and loving him first and foremost above all things? They miss the manifestation of Jesus in their life. I have seen Christ five times in my life. He's appeared to me. It's four or five. I've had to, I know it's at least four, maybe a fifth time. I, I go back every so often and remember all those times. But he's appeared to me that many times. And he says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. I will, I will, he said, I will love you and I will manifest. That word manifest in the Greek means show. I will show myself to you. Well, I probably lost some people. And I, not yet, but some people don't believe in that. I don't care. It's God's word. Folks, make the choice to believe God's word or whatever else any religion, denomination, or every individual teaches you that's different from the word. Believe what the word says. You can't go wrong believing the word of God. You can't go wrong by believing something that's man-made. Okay? But you can't go wrong by believing God's word. Praise God. And in verse 23, he says, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Love the Lord and serve him and put him first. The Bible said the Father and the Son will come. You've already got the Holy Spirit. Will come and abide with you. Not only with you, but will abide in you. I got their scripture says that when you're saved, God's Holy, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost comes inside. And here's a hard one, folks. Oh, boy. This is hard. Praise God. This is a hard one here. So it's found in Matthew. Oh, it's hard now. I'm not going to tell you to turn the radio off, but you, I mean your phone off, but praise God. This is hard now. You ready? Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Now, folks... When I say it's hard, it's hard for me. But I'm going to tell you something in a moment about what makes it will make it easier for you. Makes it easier for me. Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, Jesus is speaking, by the way. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Oh, and that's hard. 
and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Mm. The reason it's hard for me is I don't walk in the Spirit as much as I should, and I don't uh, let God have his way in my life as much as I should. And so when somebody wrongs me, it's hard. It's hard to do it because I'm not in spirit like I should be. But if I'm prayed up, if I read my bread up, if I'm walking close to the Lord, it gets easier. It'll be it's easier. And I'll tell you how you can do that. What I do, what I do, maybe it'll help you too. Love your enemies. That word love there in the Greek. Oh boy, you ready? Is the agape love of God. Love them with the same love God loves them with. Oh, boy. Jesus, you've asked too much. No, not really. You wouldn't have told us to do it if we couldn't do it. It's whether we want to or not. And I'll tell you what will make it easier for to do it. Okay? We need to be willing to Here's where I look. Instead of saying, I can never love that person, we should be praying, Lord, help me to love that person. Why? Because it's what he wants you to do, and you should want his will. His will is for you to love him the way he loves him. Woo! That's hard. So, your children, your family members, whoa! And Jesus said, love your enemies. And on the cross, he told us to do. They were killing him. They were crucifying him. They were nailing his hands and feet to the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm-mm-mm. How many of us could say that if something was done to our son or our child? I'm not saying you're going to be as me do. I've, I've went through that before. And uh, I've had a person one time hurt one of my kids. And I wasn't saved at this time. But I had a doctor hurt one of my, my our youngest, oldest son. son was, he's going to be the Lord. His name was David. He was a baby. He was only about six or eight weeks old. We took him back for a checkup, and the doctors wanted to take some kind of blood test or something. I don't know what it was. But he stuck a pin, a pin, a needle, I mean, in his uh, leg or I don't know where it was. He stuck to draw blood. And David started crying, as a baby would. God bless you, Carl. He started crying like any child would. Well, that doctor took my son's foot. He took my son's foot, this baby that was crying because he stuck him with a needle. He took my son's foot and squeezed it just as hard as he could. Thank you, Elizabeth. God bless you. And when he got done, I come within a hair of clobbering him. I come within a just a second of just knocking him on the on the floor, and I was in uniform. I was, I knew I'd get in trouble, but I it it, it, it didn't really didn't matter too much to me about that because I wasn't saved that time, and and I said I'm gonna take care of him, and I went and got everything together that I could find to back up my case and to take him, bef take him before the uh, administrator of the hospital. And when I got done with him, that hospital administrator looked at me and he said, I promise you one thing, Sergeant Trailer. He will no longer be a doctor at this hospital. That's the way I do things. Well, and when it comes to my children and my family, but God tells us, for me, and I forgive that man now, but, I, but God tells us to love our enemies. 
That man became my enemy when he did what he did. You've got some enemies, but God said we're to love them with the same love he loves them with. Boy, boy, boy. So how do I do that? Here's what I do. I say, Lord, I can't do that. I can't do it without you. I can't do it. It's not, it's not in me to do it. But I said, you in my flesh. But I said, you're in me. Jesus abides in me. The Holy Spirit abides in me. And I say, Lord, help me to love that person. And I want to love them because you want me to. I want to do your will. So help me to love them. That's why I do it. That's why I say that. And that's what you can do. You can say, Lord, I, I have a hard time with this, but I know it's your will for me to love them as you love them. And I, I want that. I want to do it because I love you and I want to do your will. I want, you to, I want to do what you want me to do. And then then how do I get there? By, here's how I do it. Praying. I pray for God to put love in my heart for my enemies because I want to. I want to love my enemies because God wants me to, because my heavenly Father wants me to do it, and because Jesus said do it, and because Jesus did it himself. And I say, Lord, put the kind of love you want me to have in my heart for my enemies. This is what I pray. Put the kind of love you have and that you want me to have in my heart for my enemies. I ask him to do it. I want to, I want to do it for him. I don't want to do it like my enemies. But the Bible said love your enemies. So I have to do what God says, and I want to. Praise God. If we are sincere in our desire to obey Jesus, then I believe he will answer our prayer. I remember one time in the past, God changing my heart towards someone I didn't like. And after I got to know them, they weren't as bad as I thought they were. And things changed for the better. And I believe drawing close to God will enable us. This is a third thing helps us to love our enemies. Drawing close to God will enable us to be more like Jesus who loved his enemies. Jesus is my example. Oh, yes, Judy. Yes, yes. She said he'll give us peace. Boy, I tell you, when you forgive people and you ask God to put a love in your heart for them and you forgive them, all oh, the peace you feel. She's exactly right. Praise God. I've been talking to you tonight about God's love. And I want you to think about this. I know sometimes that it's hard. I'm just going to be blunt and frank with you. I know sometimes it's hard to love people that's not lovable. Now, listen, folks, don't you get off of this site tonight and say, I said something I didn't say. I didn't say anything about you loving how they live. I didn't say anything about how you love in their sin. I hate their sin. I hate sin. But I'm guilty. I'm guilty as others are. I think sometimes nobody's felt the Lord like I have since being saved. But I want God's will in my life above all things. Today I was praying at the house, and it was like God said three things. God bless you, Judy. To God be all the glory. I was sitting here, and it was like God said, name three things you want. I said, well, I want to make sure that my children are in heaven, and I'm in heaven. And I already know that he's going to do that because he doesn't told me that. And then I said, I started to ask for something that wouldn't have been wrong because... It's what God wants, what I was going to ask for. But then it's it just like it stopped me. And I seen Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Father, not my will be done, but thine be done. And I said, Lord, I want your will in my life. 
Now, folks, when you when you say that, I don't, if you ever say that, and I hope every one of you will and mean it, but, folks, yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Unforgiveness is a, puts a wall between us and God and keeps our blessings away. But if you uh, make that kind of commitment and you uh, tell God that what you want in your life is, is his will, you have committed to the one thing that all that God wants all of his children's lives. One thing. He wants a lot. He'll ask us to do that, but here's the main thing he wants. He wants us to say with a sincere heart, not my will be done, but thine be done in my life. And that's the greatest request you can ever make make known uh, make uh, ask of God. And I, I go to churches sometimes, and I've held in the past many different churches. And I'll ask this question sometimes when I'm at a church, and I've been to many churches in the last few years because I work for the WJCR and I preach up there and preach a little church, and and I don't, don't, I've been to many other churches because the only nights I have is Saturday night, Sunday night after that, but. Uh, I've been to uh, many churches over the years since the 70s. When I got saved in 69. When I got saved, he called me for the ministry. I've been in ministry. If I make it till, uh, if I make it till Saturday, I will be in the ministry 51 years. Saturday, uh, May 2nd, 1969, God saved me, called me for the ministry, and that's two days from now. So if I make it till then, I will have been in the ministry to, for 51 years. Praise God. When I go to those churches, I say, folks, I want to ask you something. They don't know what I'm going to ask because I haven't told nobody. I say, if, if, if Jesus appeared to you and said, I will grant any request, any one request you've got, what do you want me to do? And he says, Nothing sinful, because my word tells you I won't, I won't answer prayers about sin. But anything that's not sinful that you want me to do, I will do it for you. What do you want me to do? What, what prayer request do you have? What one request do you have? What would you say to him? What would you say to him? Oh, there's all kinds of answers. I'd say, Lord, I want everyone of my loved ones to be saved. That's mostly the answer. And then they'll ask, some said, I want a million dollars. Some, I want a new car. I want this, new home. I want this or that. So fleshly. But here's what God's listening for. Okay? I don't know what you thought. I've done this at the little church before, and they probably know what I was going to say. But what he, you know what he wants to hear in that one request? is to you. Humble yourself before him and say, Lord, I want one thing. I want your will in my life. That's what I want. And you better mean it, folks, because it can be rough. Jesus went through an unbelievable hard time after he committed to the will of God. It was the death. He was committing to death. And that might be the very thing that we have to commit to, too. In other words, when you make that decision, just know it could cost you your life. But so what? Jesus was our example. And he said, not my will be done, Father, but thine be done. And that's what he wants us to say. He wants us to say, I want your will, Father, above everything else in life. If I've only got one request, your will be done in my life. Praise God. I want us to pray. Father, there's people, precious, precious souls listening tonight. And there's some people listening tonight that love you with all their heart. 
I don't know that all do, Lord, but I can tell you, I know there's some that are. I can feel it. Some that I believe with all my heart there's some that are. And I pray, Father, for those who are committed to you totally, who love you more than anything, then put me in there because I want to be in that category. I, I fail you so many times, but I want to be one of those that loves you more than anything. Lord, would you way your will in our lives? Folks, if you want this, agree with me. Lord, we ask this. Will you have your will in our lives? Would you give us the strength? the courage, and the peace to go through it. But have your way and will. Give us your strength, give us your courage, and give us your peace to go through whatever we have to face in life. Father, your will be done. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I pray for each and every one that's listening tonight that you will, uh, Lord, uh, meet their needs, heal those that need healing, deliver those who need deliverance, and make whole those who need to be made whole, forgive those who need forgiveness, Father, and for all of us that I pray, I pray that in Jesus' name. Now, if there's anyone listening that needs to make a decision for the Lord tonight and you realize God loves you more than anything after this message and you want, you want to make a decision to commit your life to him totally and be saved and you're not sure, then pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Dear Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God and I believe, Lord, you died for me on a cross and you took my sins. And I believe, Jesus, you were buried and rose again from the dead on the third day. I admit to you tonight that I am, I have sinned. And I ask you right now, will you forgive me of all my sins, of everything I've done wrong? Will you come into my heart and into my life and save me and make me God's child? The best I can, Lord, I give my life to you. I surrender it to you. And I accept you now as my Lord and my Savior. And I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If anybody prayed that with me tonight and meant it from your heart and you got saved tonight, let me know. Just say, I prayed with you, Brother Warren, gave my heart to the Lord and and uh, got saved tonight. This is the remember. This is the uh, folks. This is the thirtieth day, the last day of April, two thousand and twenty. Praise God. Tomorrow's the first day of uh, May. Praise God. God bless you all. My phone's about to run out, and I forgot Joshua to bring my cord in here to uh, hook it up. Praise God. So I wouldn't have to worry about that. But it's down to about. Seven, six or seven percent, praise God, but that's a little bit. I still got a little time. But if anybody uh, uh, prayed that with us tonight and meant it from your heart, let, let, let me know, let us know, and and uh, we'll rejoice with you. The Bible says in Bible 5, verse 1, make known the things God's done for you. Praise God. And I love to tell people what God's done for me when God gives me the opportunity and when it's His will. Praise God. Don't forget, Lord willing, Sunday morning, I'll be preaching at WJCR <coughs> excuse me, at the station over the air. Not They don't now have a service, but at the station at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. If you want to listen, you can go to 9.1 FM on your radio, or you can go to WJCR.org. Okay, Jonah, God bless you. Uh, God bless you, Judy. Or you can go to WJCR.org. Uh, and uh, there's a little button there that says listen live just click on it and you can get to streaming God bless you Elizabeth God bless you and uh, also uh, if you want an app that picks up our station really good and really clear go to Simple Radio S-I-M-P Radio praise God and when it comes up just put WJCR in and it'll bring and you'll be able to hear us good and clear. Praise God. 
Sam, God bless you. Love you too. Your precious brother in the Lord. You and your wife, Beth, both are precious folks. Praise God. God bless you all. And uh, if the Lord wills, uh, I'll be uh, back here Sunday night at 6 o'clock Eastern, uh, 6 o'clock Central Time. I think it's 6 o'clock Central Time. 6 o'clock Central Time. God bless you, Philip. Uh, I'll be back here, Lord, with Sunday night at 6 o'clock Central, 7 Eastern, with uh, the start of a study on the book of Revelation. Because people ask me, and I feel like God wants me to do it. Praise God. Be starting on the book of Revelation. God bless you, Carl. You too. Praise God. So come back Sunday night if you can, folks, at 6 o'clock Central Time. Praise God. Uh, and and we'll be here uh, teaching on Revelation. Until that time, may God bless and keep each one of you.